Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to teach you how I created this. It'll be a cinematic breakdown, so you'll know everything from start to finish as it comes to Unreal. Um, unfortunately, I don't go over DaVinci. However, if that is something you want in the future, I can totally start doing that for you. So just let me know in the comments. And with that, let's get started. Okay, first up is really just a block out of the scene. So all you see here is the landscape, the camera, the mannequin, and then just simple block shapes to kind of get an overall idea of what I am looking for. After that, all I do is enter the landscape mode, which you can switch up to in the top left. And I just bring up the landscape so everything is uh, a little more natural instead of just having a completely flat surface. So now I added a landscape material. Um, this is just a simple material from Quixel Bridge. And then now I'm gonna populate my scene using um, all of our assets you'll see here. Um, this is really the most fun part in my opinion because it kind of feels like you go from you know zero to 80 percent of your project being done and also when you do block out correctly it makes this process so much easier because you kind of have already an idea of what you want it to look like so now i'll just keep populating our scene so the next thing up here is bringing in panels to block out our sun so instead of actually building the top half since it's not going to be seen in our actual export uh, i'm just going to be bringing in panels to basically block out the sun However, the issue with this is they're white. So I'm gonna right click, go to create a material and I'll name this M underscore black. And then I can open it, uh, do a V click to get a vector node uh, that can go into your base color. And then two S clicks, uh, one will go into metallic and another S click into roughness. If you're not sure what S click does, it's just a parameter node. Uh, and I'll increase the roughness and keep metallic down to zero and then add that to our panels. This way they block out the sunlight and don't bounce the way white panels would. So I'll use these throughout the top of our scene to kind of help block out some light. Next things up is some ground materials. So I use a bunch of different stuff from Quixel here. Uh, if you just type in like desert or canyon, um, you should be able to find plenty of good materials. But the first plan here is to kind of build out the sides and then move inwards to the actual meat of the, our uh, scene. So you'll see me kind of testing different stuff and moving things around. Uh, one other thing I do want to call out is I'm going to also be showing how to change the colors of it so it all matches. Uh, so if you are following along and trying to create something similar to what I'm creating, uh, do not feel limited by things that need to match a color. Uh, that's a very easy fix. So here are some ground materials that I'm adding in that are a good example of uh, colors not matching. Um, so this is definitely something you want to avoid in the sense that this is definitely not like cinematic ready. Um, but an easy way to actually fix this is to switch to unlit mode. So you can go up here to the top left hand corner where it says lit. If you click on it, bring it down to unlit. And then um, basically if it matches in unlit mode, it'll match in lit mode. So the, what you wanna do is click on the material you wanna change, go over to the material in the details panel, which will be on the bottom right, uh, double click that. And then there should be something saying tint or albedo tint. Uh, you wanna adjust those categories. Um, one good thing to do is also to look up like what colors lead to what. So in my case, I'm trying things to be a little more yellow, which means I need to adjust a lot of the red and green and kind of bring down blue. So it's about finding a mixture of red and green. Uh, those numbers are usually gonna be higher for my um, materials and then blue will should be lower. I also did have to do a little more specific editing for this. Uh, for example, the actual ground material didn't have a tint to kind of adjust it. Um, so what I did was I actually went into a material that did have the tint, uh, copied that and then pasted it into my landscape material and kind of added everything together. So don't be afraid to kind of mix and match things from different materials. It helps a lot to inspect the materials that are working the way you want them to work and then kind of take those pieces over to other materials so they work the way you want to work. Um, so now my landscape material, I can adjust the actual tint um, as well as everything else. So speeding through this as I switch all the materials, uh, this is the end result. So here we are with all of our materials blended via the albedo tint. 
So it looks really nice once you put some time into it. Uh, but again, working on lit, it's wildly more helpful than trying to get everything to match while in lit mode. Okay, next up is gonna be adding a post-process volume. So you can go up to the top left, um, click on the little box with the plus sign, go down to volumes, and then go to post-process volume. First thing you're gonna do is type in bound and do check uh, infinite extent bound. Uh, and then we can type in uh, EX for exposure and make sure the min EV100 and max EV100 is the same number. That way you're not getting any exposure changes and it'll lock in your scene to a certain exposure range. Uh, for me, I use uh, negative 0.1. Um, this wildly helps the overall look of our scene. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that. All right, next up is adding in our level sequence. So go to the little clapperboard, click on it, and go to add level sequence. And then I'm going to name mine LS underscore main. Yeah, let's go with main. Um, and then I will open that up. First thing I'm going to do is add our camera. Uh, you can do that over to track. Um, and then I will just take my camera and move it forward. So it's pretty simple. Um, you just go to transform, uh, click on the keyframe, move the camera, and then click on the keyframe again, and then it'll move between uh, the both positions that you basically set it at. Um, if you wanna learn more about this, I have some tutorials on my page, uh, specifically on the camera sequencer. Um, so check those out. Okay, now onto our character. So this is F2 Katana Girl Lily. Uh, I brought her into our scene and then I animated her using the Mixamo Converter by Terabilis. If you wanna learn more about this converter, I do have a tutorial on my YouTube. So check it out. But really what you do is you get the mannequin from the converter, upload it up to Mixamo, um, pick the animations you would like via Mixamo, um, so in my case, it is this girl praying, and then I also brought in some walking, uh, and then you download it, um, make sure it is without skin and uniform keyframe reduction. Uh, so download that um, and then bring it into your uh, Unreal project. Also on Terabilis, while you're doing it, it'll tell you exact settings you need to click while uploading it into Unreal. Um, so just scroll to the bottom there and it'll show. But again, I have the tutorial that will give you a step-by-step -step process. Um, but yeah, once I have the animations into our scene, the next step is the retargeter. So I'll go over to content uh, in the search bar, type in RTG, and then go the UE4 to UE5 uh, mannequin retargeter. I switch out the body for the one I just brought in, and then I just click on the animations in the bottom right, and then go to export. Uh, and that is how you can transfer your animations from the uh, UE4 mannequin over to really a new skeleton. So now that those animations are done, I go back to our camera sequencer and I bring the animations in. Um, and then I kind of layer them together and you can do uh, match this clip to the previous bone or the next bone. Um, this really helps you kind of morph or blend animations together. With this specific one, it was a little finicky and it took a lot of time to get it right. Uh, in fact, if you see it, you'll see her jump a little in the animation, which bothers me, but it is the way it is. Um, the other thing I also did is it activated physics on the actual character. That way her um, clothing kind of move with the motion. And then the last one is adding in the camera shake. So with the animation in, I'm now gonna add camera shake. So you can right click blueprint uh, and then go to all classes and add in camera shake base. Now that you have the blueprint created, um, I'm gonna name it camera shake and then open it up, close it, open it up again. That way you get the menu base. Uh, if you bring down all the tabs, um, it'll show you everything. It's pretty intuitive, but the shake will change location and rotation and it'll have amplitude and frequency multipliers. So play with those numbers. But one thing you definitely wanna do is if you look here at tiling under duration, make sure it's zero. That way you can uh, elongate it or shorten it uh, based on however long you want your click or shake to last. And with that, most of my main changes are in. Um, I animate the directional light a little bit so it kind of moves as the camera moves. Um, the camera shake is added in and I try and fix the blending, kind of slow down the overall animation, which you can do by right clicking and going to properties. 
um, and kind of just make last minute adjustments. But with that done, we can now move over to export settings. Okay, so the last thing here is opening the movie render queue. Um, I add anti-lazing.exr and game overrides. These have slowly become my main go-tos. Uh, set both to 12 or actually temporal I'll set to, or spatial I'll set to six. I do wanna warn you if you want motion blur in your scene, uh, do not do a high spatial count because um, it will change it. Uh, and then I just pick the location for my exports and then start rendering it. All right, I hope this helped you guys out. I really wanted to create something that was quick and concise that still helped explain how I make my cinematics. So if you want something more in depth, please let me know. If you also want DaVinci, please let me know. But in general, please like, subscribe, comment. Uh, it helps me out a ton, also keeps me motivated. And yeah, I will catch you guys on the next one.